Hey guys, it's Mike Chen. Welcome to my kitchen. And today we are gonna jam out a meaty, porky, juicy, charred, smoky, sweet, savory, so many adjectives to describe this amazing, amazing dish. I would actually say it is the most popular, most well-known Chinese barbecue meat item in the world, char siu. This is a staple you'll see in pretty much every single Cantonese restaurant. You know, when you walk by, you see the duck hanging by the window, you're always gonna see a strip of glowing red meat, and that is this baby here. And this thing has so many applications. You can eat it on its own, it's good with rice, it's good with vegetables, you put it inside a bun, you can make some char siu bun. So versatile, so delicious. Now I'm gonna teach you how to make it, and again, like everything on this channel, if I can do it, you can do it. This is not a hard recipe. I guarantee you by the end of this video, if you tried this dish, your family's probably gonna think you pretended to cook and just got takeout instead, or you've been moonlighting as a barbecue apprentice at the local Chinese barbecue restaurant. But the bottom line is, you will be pulling out a piping hot slab of char siu from the oven, and whoever you serve it to, is gonna be very impressed with you. All right, let's get started. Here's what you need. Four cloves of garlic, sesame oil, salt, Chinese five spice, sugar, oyster sauce, Chinese cooking wine, dark soy sauce, molasses, and the honey. Final ingredient is, is something we haven't introduced uh, in my videos yet. This is fermented tofu, okay, tofu ru, and you need the red kind. And those are called hongfu ru, which is red fermented tofu. This is a very versatile ingredient. Through fermentation, the texture is now more creamy, and the flavor has amplified 20,000 billion light years away fold. It's extremely salty, and it's great for stir frying, adding flavor. You can also eat it just with rice alone. It's something that basically every single Chinese household has in their fridge. And we're using the red fermented tofu because we're gonna use this to give the char siu its signature red color. I just wanna say that a lot of Chinese cooking, you're gonna see a lot of the similar um, ingredients popping up like sesame oil, five spice we're gonna use a lot, oyster sauce we use all the time, Chinese cooking wine we use basically in every single dish. Of course, soy sauce, I would definitely recommend getting the light one and the dark one. There is a big difference. Like I mentioned before, the dark is more for color and it's less salty. So I'll do a video just on the ingredients later, but once you stock your cupboard full of these ingredients, you will be utilizing them a lot. And each one of them has so many different kinds of applications. So I would definitely recommend investing in these ingredients that are not expensive. Go to the local Chinese store, you'll get all this for like 20 bucks. All right, finally, you need the meat. I will go with either pork shoulder or pork butt or Boston butt, you can call that as well, because it has a nice blend of lean and fat. Tenderloin, if you want to make your char siu really lean, go for a tenderloin. I like some that. So I got some piggy behind and what you want to do is cut the meat into strips and you don't want it too thick because you really want the sauce to get in there. You can cut it around one inch, two inch wide, but no more than an inch on thickness. Also what you need is a roasting rack and I have uh, these two things, these little steaming racks I found at a Chinese grocery store. It cost me about a dollar a piece and you want them to have little legs so your meat is not touching the bottom of your roasting pan. And of course, you need a roasting pan. Finally, a bag uh, or a pan that you'll wanna use to marinate the meat overnight. So this is a two-day process. You're gonna wanna marinate everything after we're done with the sauce. We're gonna do our roasting tomorrow, but really that's all this recipe is. You combine all the sauces and, and seasoning together into the marinade. That's pretty simple, right? Drop the meat in there, leave it in the fridge for 24 hours, then the roasting begins. Really just a few steps and you'll have yourself some restaurant quality roast pork. All right, let's do the marinade. Half teaspoon Chinese five spice, tablespoon of sugar, one piece of the fermented tofu, one tablespoon of the fermented tofu juice, four cloves minced garlic, one tablespoon of Shaoxing cooking wine, one tablespoon of oyster sauce, one tablespoon of dark soy sauce, one teaspoon paprika, one teaspoon of sesame oil, two teaspoons of molasses, two tablespoons of warm water, and one tablespoon of honey. 
Give it a good mix. That's it, take your bag, put in two pounds of your pork. Toss in your marinade. But save a couple of tablespoons for basting. Seal your bag up. Also make sure to get all the air out of the bag too. All right, this is done. This goes in the fridge for 24 hours. All right then, see you tomorrow. Hey, happy new day. I woke up early this morning, didn't even mind because I knew this baby was sitting in the fridge waiting for me to wake it up. And before you cook this, take it out of the, the fridge in about an hour before and just let it get to room temperature before we put it into the oven. How you doing? This thing has been marinating for 24 hours. Now it's time to reap the reward. First thing we're gonna do, baking tray, lining with aluminum. Put our little roasting rack on here. Take our meat, place it on top of the rack. And make sure you add a couple cups of water to the bottom of the tray just to prevent anything from burning. All right, preheat your oven to 400 degrees. Slap this in there and put it on the upper third section of the oven. We're gonna roast the meat for 20 minutes. When the time is up, flip the meat over on the other side and continue to roast it for another 20 minutes. Remember that extra marinade we kept out? Take that, add about a tablespoon of honey to that. Give it a nice mix. And we're gonna use this to baste the roast pork when the 20 minutes is up. We're gonna put this in for another 10 minutes and every five minutes we're gonna baste it again. By this time, the pork is cooked. Now, it's up to you whether you want your char siu to be a little more charred or a little less. You can burn this meat a little bit. The char is really nice when it comes to this. So you can put this in and put it on broil and roast each side for just a few minutes to get that char I want. Now, just let it rest for five minutes and we about to open that baby up. Here it is. Oh, it smells so good. Don't worry about the char on the outside. Ain't nothing wrong with that. Look at that juicy piece of pork. Oh. Um, that was unbelievable. And this is why we picked pork butt. Because it has that nice, stream of fat inside. And that's gonna keep this incredibly juicy. Oh mama, tell me this doesn't look absolutely amazing. Tell me your mouth is not watering right now. Mm. Oh, that is what porky dreams are made of. In this piece, it starts off a little lean and then it just gets all sorts of juicy. But even the lean piece, that's still so tender. Mmm, it's so flavorful. And even though that's the case, the fatty piece, I'm gonna knock your socks off. Knock your socks off. Look at this. And right here, that nice piece of char attached to that piece of fat, just to crisp things up. Don't worry, if it's like getting black on the outside, you're like, I'm gonna burn it. Don't worry about that. That actually makes this really, 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 really good. And look, this recipe is customizable. If you want your char shoe to be redder, like what they have in a restaurant, you can add red food coloring. But I feel like for me, this is good. I don't need it too red. For me, it's all about the flavor and this is perfect. If you want it sweeter, my char shoe is not overly sweet. I don't like it too sweet. If you want it sweeter, you can add additional honey or additional sugar to the recipe. But I feel like my recipe is perfect balance between sweet and savory. And guys, with this recipe, it's so important to pick the right piece of meat. 
you don't want it too dry. You want to have the fat swimming in the meat. Trust me, those, just like a fatty brisket, that's what's going to melt in your mouth. All right, guys, for sure, this is a must-try recipe. If you make this, you like it, make sure to tag me on Instagram at M-I-K-E-X-I-N-G-C-H-E-N. Hashtag cook with Mikey. Let me see what you come up with. It just makes me happy that we can share the same dish together, you know? As always, all the ingredients listed down below for you. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we cook again, see you later.